when most people think of Terminal 2 at Heathrow, they think of the block where you check in, drop your bags. That building is Terminal 2A, T2A. Behind that is our project, Terminal 2B. That's a satellite concourse. It's the place where you board your aircraft. The challenge that Heathrow gave us was to say we want to build it 10% uh, cheaper and 20% faster than any other pier they'd built on the airport. For us, it's almost the perfect brief because we love to solve problems. Really what that means is, you know, getting the big moves right from the outset. What Grimshaw realised early on is that um, it's a passenger-facing facility and the passengers are always inside. So it's an inside-out building. The external is quite plain, but the inside is where all the effort went. Our uh, approach within the building, the interior, is to create a sense of light and a sense of warmth and an additional sense of quality in those spaces. There's a move away from that typically sterile experience that airports tend to give us. As an example of that, the arrivals tube, which is suspended in the middle of the departures concourse, we clad in English oak. Usually people, when they arrive in a country, they get kind of squirted through a very dark corridor and, and, and emerge in a kind of a baggage hall. We wanted that to be different. So the arriving passengers are taken above departing passengers in a generous, naturally lit arrivals walkway, which enjoys great views out to the apron. So there's a sense for those arriving passengers of being welcome to the airport in a meaningful way. Underneath the passenger facing areas, there are two very, very large basement spaces. One of those is designed to accommodate a baggage system in the future. The second big basement is designed for a transit system. It's an iceberg project. 80% of the project is below ground. During the construction of the basement, it was a very, very big hole. We believe passionately is that you can't separate the design of our buildings from their construction. The contractor, Balfour Beatty, was involved in the project from earlier than is often the case and it became a design partnership from that point on. T2B was a massive undertaking. Uh, it's about a million square feet, cost around about 700 million pounds. At peak, probably 2,000 people working on site at any one time. T2B was the largest airside site in the history of Heathrow Airport. So that means that the site is an island surrounded by moving aircraft. Working on the air side, it's like going on a flight. So every time someone goes to work, they've got to show their passport and all of the materials have got to be security cleared as well. So you can imagine that's an incredible uh, burden in terms of cost and time. What we as an integrated team did was to try to minimize the number of components using self-finished materials, for example. Within the departures areas, the, the ceiling above you is an exposed steel tray. It's a very simple, almost industrial finish, actually. Finished, fabricated elements were all brought in, rolled across the runway, and then lifted in and bolted together. And that comes through working with the engineers, the mechanical engineers in, in particular, and all of the construction guys. We didn't have an us and them mentality at all. The will to create efficiency in the building was there within the whole team. So we were literally right next to Balfour's, and then the client was behind us, and we'd have the suppliers sitting the level below. So you were right in the middle of it all. It had huge advantages 
you could make the decisions there and then. One of the key spaces in Terminal 2B is the hub area. We have an open space over four floors, which is floodlit by a roof light with baffles diffusing the light. There are options there that we explored, which were around much larger areas of roof light and much more complex geometries. It would have taken quite a lot of time to build and it would have been quite costly. We as a contractor, along with our supply chain, suggested a number of alternative solutions. And far from being adverse to that concept, Grimshaw embraced it. This is working in collaboration. You know, recognising that you are designing within a particular context and responding to that appropriately. When the project was complete, one day I went to the bottom of the atrium space and I rang Andy. Thomas and just said how blown away I was with what I saw and how proud I felt at that moment in time. I needed to share that moment with him because it was just fantastic what we'd achieved.